in thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. Now, the only man, as I said to you in my last message, that has no reason to be confused is a Christian man. Now, if you trust money, you live in confusion. You want what to do with it. You want how to invest it. There isn't an intelligent businessman in this country today that has money to invest that isn't more or less confused because of the uncertainty of the world and the conditions it surrounds us. You don't know exactly what to do. Most businessmen live that way all their lives. And most of the investments that businessmen make, they make by getting all the information they can, all the facts it's possible to get, and then uh, they invest what they have to invest, uh, hoping it's good. There isn't any man on earth that can absolutely know that what he has to invest can be securely invested. I remember one time I was talking to a banker about a certain trust interest he had. He was a wise banker, and he had a good many people that uh, he was having trust funds for. And he was telling me the responsibility that rested upon the trust department for handling funds. Now, the very name of the thing, trust, now, the banker would know that if times were normal and conditions could be kept normal, that there are certain investments that are good. For instance, he knows that the first mortgage on land in a stable government under stable conditions has always been wonderful. He knows certain things. He knows that government bonds are supposed to be the best thing in the world. He knows that. But, you know, you cannot be absolutely certain in this world about money. You know, great governments are, have gone to ruin. You take Rome's in rubbish. Why, I can imagine those great capitalists in the ancient days of Rome with Chesty and stepped around talked about what they had. But what went with it? What went with the wealth of ancient Greece? What went with the wealth of Babylon when they had the garden swinging there? Now, you can't absolutely trust money. Now, you do the best you can. And I think we in pretty good fix in this country. But, you know, we have uh, sometimes funds out here to invest in people. Let's have some trust funds in the school here to take care of. Maybe they want an annuity. Somebody gives us an annuity. We uh, say, now, what do we do? We can't afford not to pay the interest when it's due, you know, an annuity. That's serious. A woman puts up $10,000, $25,000, some money, and she's a widow, maybe, and she depends on her income to live on, see, for her life. But well, we never have gone out and tried very hard to get annuities. Because uh, we, it's just a little scary, you know. Just, I'm frank with you. But we take them if they offer them to us. But you know what we do? We take a certain percentage of that money and put it in government bonds and lock it up in a vault. A certain percentage of it. We play as safe as it's possible the human government to play. So if a depression should come, that then we've got some money there set aside to at least carry interest. You can figure all the ways you can. There isn't anybody in this world that can be absolutely certain about what's going to happen to the governments of the world. You can't be. We live in the greatest country in the world. And the more I've seen of other lands, the more I thank God for America. And there isn't any reason why America shouldn't prosper and keep on prospering until the climax of the age shall come. But we don't know. Nobody knows. You can't tell what's going to happen. Now, you think of the tragedy that could come to this nation. Why, a bomb could be dropped on a city and destroy it. Just one bomb. Why, it wouldn't take but about a hundred of them to destroy the industrial plants of this nation. Now, suppose the industrial plants of America were destroyed. No automobile plants. I don't think it could happen. I think our government's sufficient enough to stop it. But, you know... Uh, <laughs> I don't know. We are not the only people with brain in the world. All the folks in other lands are not idiots. God's been good to America. And one reason God's been good to America, America, God wanted America preserved for a purpose. You know, we're always fixing our attention on man instead of on God. That's temptation of human nature. That's a trend of our thinking. Now, he didn't say here, Lord, I'm trusting my government to take care of. That's the first thing most of us do. Get in trouble, we call up Washington, contact your senator, get in touch with your congressman, see the governor, see somebody else. First thing we think of, how can I handle this in Washington? What can we do about this? 
Or we go to the banker. Well, now, that's all right. I'm not a banker. I have always had banker advisors. And this is no reflection on anybody. I believe in the best business brains that you can have. And I believe in conservative business brains. And, certain, and I believe in sensible promotion. All that kind of situation. And I know men who are good businessmen. But those men have to figure as a whole upon conditions remaining practically normal. I have a friend that's a prosperous industrialist. But several years ago, he's worried to death. And he's just one of the best businessmen I know anywhere in this country. He's a fine man, a Christian man. But he was uncertain about the situation. That's the way it is with the world. It's always been that way. Never has been a time when I was a boy on the farm. Maybe we had some debts to pay in the fall. And we figured now if cotton will stay up, we can meet him. My father's a very honest man to meet every note that was due when it was due. He couldn't stand the idea. He wouldn't settle it, uh, for a discount with anybody. He paid a hundred cents on the dollar. But you know, when the banking uh, time was coming, my father'd be sometimes nervous. Cotton was down. Well, uh, one of it's going up. It doesn't go back up. I, I, I can't meet that paper, see? That's the confusion of the world always has been, the confusion of the world, see? Always has been. But the man who trusts God knows that he has a banker that never goes broke. And God, the great banker of the universe, may let you go broke, but he never goes broke. Now, it's a wonderful thing. Did you know it wouldn't be bad to go broke in your business if you could still stand in with the banker? You could start over. The trouble is, when you go broke, the banker in this world can't help you. He's got to have securities. You go broke and go down to a banker. Now, he's not handling his money. He's handling the people's money. You go down to a banker when you go broke and say, I'm broke, I haven't got a thing in the world. Will you loan me some money? I have no collateral, no security, anything like that. But now, if you had something, he said, well, I'm sorry, but uh, we'd like to help you. I'd help you personally if I could. Maybe I can let you have a little personally. Maybe you're a close friend of the banker and he's got a little money. I'll make you a little personal loan. But well, I can't loan this banking money here without uh, some, some kind of security. Get anybody's door you know with you, see? But, you know, if you had a bank or somewhere with a lot of money, it wouldn't be so bad for a good hustling fellow to go broke. He could start over. Need him some money, start over. Well, now, God Almighty may let some of his folks go broke sometime. He doesn't promise you business will never fail you. But he said, I'll be your banker. I'll be your banker. Now, if you go broke, don't worry about it. Come around and see me, see? And I'll supply your needs. What do you need? Well, I need so-and-so. Well, I'll supply it if it's a real need. I'll have to decide whether it's a need or not, because I know more about it than you do. I know the end of the beginning. I know the future. I know the present. I know the past. You know, the trouble is so many people, they think they know more than uh, God knows about. It. Out here at Bob Jones University, we have a fund that we call faculty stabilization salary fund. A any time that uh, things get a little low, we need to pull them up, or, and we have another fund we call the faculty emergency fund. If an emergency, an unexpected emergency comes up beyond anything that anybody can see, well, that fund is in the control of a committee that handles it. It's a faculty committee. Whatever they recommend, the administration will do about it. They recommend let this fellow have $200, $300, $400, whatever they're in, 500 whatever they recommend. This committee passes on, it gets all the facts in the case. It's a fund that's for that purpose. All right? We say to these employees in the institution, now, uh, now you can't be the judge of whether that's the emergency fund or not. It'll have to go through a regular process. The committee has to be the judge. It's your committee. And uh, they might decide that in view of all the affairs connected with it, that you might get a little less than that or something like that. Or they might voluntarily supply something that you didn't ask for. But they have to be the judge. Now, God Almighty never makes a mistake when he judges. This committee might make a mistake, but God wouldn't. He's infinite. He's all wise. He knows the past. He knows the present. He knows the future. So, if you go broke, God may say, all right, he needs to go broke. He needs to get some humility. And I'll make it work together if he's good. He loses his money, all right. Goes broke, all right. Depression comes, all right. Many women, let me stop here to give a testimony. I want you to listen to me. The things in a business way along the road of life that seem to be the worst things that ever happened in my life were the best things. As I look back over the years, the best thing ever happened to me and to my work and to the cause to it that I represent. The best thing ever happened to me was the hard things that came to me. 
depressions and such as that. As I see them now, I couldn't understand some things at one time. When the depression was on and I had to cash out my last life insurance policy to pay some floating debts that had no security. I had to pay them. Didn't have to pay them. Weren't my debts. They were debts of the school, and I never did own the school, but I paid them. I couldn't understand that. My wife was very brave about it and said, go ahead. But as I look back now, I can see how God Almighty permitted everything to come. See? He's my banker. See, it's not bad to go broke if you have the right kind of banker with plenty of money to help you. So the psalmist says no use to being confused. The people are confused because they don't trust God. All the confusion of the world, the cobwebs that gather in the mind that bother you, is still lack of faith. If you have satisfactory faith, adequate faith in God, you won't be always confused and scared to death and wondering what to do. That's what the psalmist is talking about. He said here, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be put to confusion. I'm looking to you now, and I'm trusting you to see to it that my keep me clear. I'm going to trust you. Keep my mind clear and my heart clear and vision to see and give me the wisdom I need to meet the emergencies I can meet and ought to meet and the things I can't meet, I'll let you meet for me. What a great God we have. Isn't it wonderful to be a Christian? Isn't it wonderful to be able to call God your Father? Aren't you glad you're saved? How do folks get along that don't have this blessed something I'm talking about now? The saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and the assurance of the protection of the Father. Our Heavenly Father, we pray to help us. Help us to be what we ought to be. Help us to lean upon Thee. Help us to get close to Thee. Help us to trust Thee. Save us from all the confusion and the disturbance that upset men and drive them to suicide and to insanity and to every kind of thing in these days when the world is uncertain and the hearts of men are failing because of fear what's coming. Keep us faithful to Thee and true to Thee. And help us to get nearer to Thee, all of us. We pray in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.